It's okay. Okay. So where is she? Um, is she close to where she lives? I've got maps of that general area. Which town is she near? Why don't we start there? I'm not sure if you give me a map of that um, covers Caligar down to the highway and over to Tweed. I'll show you. Let me see what I got here. I might have something. Is she inside, outside? the biggest area I have there, Russ? Yeah, you need more. You need a real map. So where am I going on the, uh, on here to get to her? In this block here. Okay. So you're pointing you to... A detailed map of that area and I'll show you where she is. Okay. Is she close to a road? Yep. Alright. Um, is it something where... Is she, is she buried or is she somewhere where if you walk there you would you would fairly easily see her. It's here. Okay. So she's south of 7, uh, east of Tweed, mm -hmm. west of 41. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's this road here? Not sure. Neither am I. Okay. I'll be right back, okay? Do you want any water or anything? Sure. Okay. I'll be right back. How long has she been there for? A little over a week. Was it fairly quick from the time she left? Friday night. Friday night? Yep. So where was she between Thursday night and Friday night? In Tweed. With you? Yep. How long was she alive for? Almost 24 hours, not quite. Russ, you're doing the right thing here. Okay. Well, again, my interest is in uh, making my, my wife's life a little easier. And okay. her family as well. Wow. We share that interest. But there's no, uh, your time in Ottawa is wasted, really. I'll tell you where the memory sick cards are. Where are they? They're in the house there, but... In Ottawa? Yeah. Whereabouts? Um, some in the camera bag, which they would have found in my office. Mm -hmm. And in the when you walk into the office on the left side, there's a, um, a desk of a drawers, set okay. of drawers, like a filing cabinet, wooden, Ikea. In one of the top two drawers, and there's a plastic divider. Yeah. And there's, uh, inside there, there are two memory cards. Okay. Which are blank, but I'm sure they can be re- uh, And whose images are on those cards? Uh, well, uh, I've erased them, but I expect uh, you'll be able to draw images of uh, Jessica and I. What about Marie? on there as well. Okay. And the two women from September? Yep. Okay. Do you have those images stored anywhere else? Yeah, 
Yeah, there are um, two hard drives in the house in Ottawa. I can draw you a little picture if you like. Sure. Do you want to do that now while I'm sure. getting them out? Okay. <coughs> Want anything to eat or anything? Leave that with you. Okay. Somebody running around looking for an actual map, but uh, I did the same thing with uh, the Google Maps, just have to blew them up a little bit more. Um. This is the this is the biggest of the area. I'll make, this might have better parameters for you. Here's Tweet. What road is that? Carry? No. South of, can't read that word, uh, East Hungerford? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Oh, there it is there. Okay. How far off the road is she? 40 feet. She bear, if she covered with anything? She's wrapped up. In She's what? on the surface. Just a gray something or other. Cover. Barry, the obvious question I'm going to have for you is when they go there, and they'll be there shortly, mm -hmm. they're going to find her? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be right back. You look like you want to say something. Just that the, this place, my wife, it's been a dream for a better part of a year, so I'm keen to get them what they need and so they can leave her alone. Okay, well, we're going to do our best to keep that as low-key as possible, okay? What do you want to talk about? It's uh, pretty wide open now, right? Yeah. What do you want to know? Well, do you want to work forwards or backwards? Doesn't matter. Well, why don't we start with Jessica? Okay. How does that start for you? Um, I saw her in her house on her treadmill. Wednesday night, I guess. And I noticed she wasn't um, there Thursday. So I got into the house to look around. Then, um, and then left. Noticed she'd come home. So I went back in. Through the uh, back patio door. While she was uh, sleeping. So I woke her up, I 
didn't um, didn't hit her. She only hit her once. Friday night. Well, so I raped her in uh, in her house, and then I took her to the car and took her to Tweet. the hit on the back of the head to? Well, I was surprised that uh, her, her skull gave way. She was there and immediately unconscious. Uh, I strangled her. Okay. What did you hit her with? Flashlight. Okay. In the house or outside the house? In the house. Where in the house did this happen? In the main portion, just in front of the fireplace. What do you mean they'll find signs of it? Oh, well, there's quite a bit of blood. I hadn't expected. I'd expected to knock her out. But obviously generated a lot of blood. What did she bleed onto? The floor. It's just a tile floor. Okay. Did you clean it up or did you? I, I wiped it up. I know it'll be uh, easily spotted. Well, it makes you think that? Like, if I walked in that house right well, now, would, would I see you it? you wouldn't see it, not at all, but, uh, you know, the right signs will, uh, will show it, I'm sure. Okay. Um, so when that happened, was she, did she have clothes on, or was she naked? Yeah, or? she was dressed. Okay. So when we find her, is she going to have those clothes on, too? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Marie France uh, Como. There was an open window in the basement of her, uh, her house when she was away. I went in there um, a couple of nights before uh, she came home. Looked around. I went back in there uh, late at night when she was at home. She was on the phone in her bedroom. She actually discovered me in the basement. She was trying to get her cat to come upstairs and the cat was in the basement had seen me and was fixated on me in the corner. She couldn't get the cat up so uh, she came downstairs trying to get the cat, and uh, I'm not more sure why she uh, came over to me. I guess the cat was staring at me, and she was wondering what the cat was staring at. The lights were on. So when she spotted me, I um, had the same flashlight. I subdued her, tied her up, brought her upstairs.
later in the morning. Well, more suffocated her. Right. Some tape. Left her there. How did you subdue her? And when you say subdued her in the basement, what did you do? Well, I had the same flashlight. And, um, you know, she, she saw me right away, so I was just, I uh, hit her a couple of times and around her head, try and knock her out. Didn't, but um, she was bleeding a little bit. Eventually, um, Drew struggled, subdued her. Okay. Any blood from from that struggle? Oh yeah. No, not not a whole bunch, but uh, a flashlight did break her skin a couple of times. Okay. What area of the basement did that take place in? I was hiding behind the furnace, so she spotted me right there. Okay. Did she recognize you? No, I had uh, stuff on my face. Okay. Um, so then you go upstairs, and you said uh, she suffocated? Well, I suffocated her. I put tape on her. I put tape on her mouth, and then I put tape on her uh, nose and held it there so she couldn't breathe. Okay. Um, what kind of tape was it? Dark tape. What happened to it? tape for any other purposes? No. Okay. Um, did she ever recognize you through this whole episode? No. What did you say you had on your face? I had just a, a cover for my head, just to, you know, a sports, you know, pullover type, like just a little cap kind of thing. Okay. Just a, I think, you know, a wicker or something. And they, um, just a headband over my nose and mouth. So it covered most everything but my eyes. Okay. Um, now this flashlight, where is that now? In Tweed. In the house? What kind of flashlight is it? It's a red uh, three double D. Um, I'm not sure what brand it is, but it's a metal, you know, one of these aluminum. It's like a big um, I don't remember what brand the you know, aircraft aluminum flashlights already see on. Anyway, it's a big bigger one of those. Um did you take anything out of uh, Marie France's house or Jessica Lloyd's house? Uh, yeah, some of their uh, underwear. Okay. That's all. And where is that? Um, it's in some boxes in the basement here in Ottawa, in that rec room. We just moved in, so there are boxes everywhere. So on the same side as the furnished room, sort of in the back against the wall. Okay. What do the other boxes look like? Um, I 
and one's a scanner, the box for my scanner. Mm -hmm. They're they're all right next to each other. So a quick look through the boxes there will find it. Okay. How much underwear is in those boxes? Um, know, probably sixty pieces or so. All women's. Yeah, sixty pieces of theirs. Of whose? Of Jessica's and. Uh, so you took 60 pieces from between the two of them? Yeah. Okay. I think so. All right. Um, and they're in a, like when you talk about a scanner, is it a computer scanner box? Well, a computer scanner is up in the office and its box is down in the basement. So okay. it's inside that box. Does any of the underwear in those boxes belong to anyone other than Marie Franz or, uh, or Jessica? Um, Yeah, there's some from each of the other two women. Okay. Uh, why don't we talk about those two women? Mm -hmm. um, so the first one happened on the 16th, and I don't know why I can't recall their names, but uh, the lady that was uh, lived closer to you. No, Lori was closer to me. Okay. So the first, uh, the first one, mm -hmm. I had just spotted her from our boat, actually. And I got into the house while she was uh, asleep. Noticed that she was alone. And uh, just hit her with my hand while she was sleeping. subdued her, mostly just my weight on top of her, um, had her take off her pajamas, took some pictures, took some of her underwear and left. And the other woman? Same kind of deal. Running through the back of the house. She was sleeping in her, um, not in her bedroom, but in her, you know, in front of the TV. Very much the same story. Anything different about that story? Oh, uh, yeah. Pretty much the same story and exactly the same story or two different things, right? Yeah, no, uh, not much different at all. Um, I did have the flashlight that time. I hit her with the flashlight. I'm thinking it would knock her out. It did. So, and I subdued her with my weight. Took off her clothes, took some pictures, and left. Why do you think these things happen? Oh. Have you spent much time thinking about that? About why? Yeah. This, did you like or dislike these women? I didn't know any of them. Okay. I had met Maddie Franz that one time in that in our uh, airplane. Okay. No, I, I guess I guess when yeah, when you're going through these things, um, are you? Would, well, well, let me let's talk about Jessica because she was there with you for the whole day, right? What kind of feelings were you experiencing while you were with her that day? I 
Oh, she's a very nice girl. Can you tell me why you killed her? Right. Do you know why you killed her? Well, I think I killed her because I knew that, uh, her story would be recognized. Her story would be recognized? How do you mean? Well, because she knew I was taking pictures. Mm -hmm. So because of the uh, two uh, stories in Tweed, So if you didn't take pictures, what would you have done with her? I don't know. I mean, she's at your house, right? Um, well, let, let me ask you this. Is it uh, two lived, right, and two died? What's, what was the difference in your mind between... Well, the... Uh the attention the first two got, um, was very much fo focused on, obviously, or for obvious reasons, uh, the pictures I took. So anybody else telling stories about pictures, right, would have been a fairly straight line. But when, when this thing happened with Marie Franz, there was, was, did you believe that you were already a suspect for what happened in Sweet? No. So what, what were you concerned about? Well, because um, I was pretty sure that, uh, you know, that she was serving military, right? Mm -hmm. It would have been, uh, it would have been difficult for investigators to ignore that connection. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Let's go back to Jessica then, okay? Um, you see her on the Wednesday night, okay? On her treadmill? Mm -hmm. How do you see her? She was in the basement, window wide open, on her treadmill. So I drove by. Okay. Did you, did you stop to look at the house or how, do, how does that catch your eye as you drive by? Looking to see who was, who was where. Don't know that area very well, so I was just keeping my eyes open. Okay. So you spot her on the Wednesday. Yeah. Um, do you just keep on going, or do you just stop and take a closer look that no. night, or anything? No. I kept going. Okay. And you went back on the Thursday night, right? Yeah. So you go back on the Thursday night and you went you went into the house before she came home? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, she was out. Okay. Um yeah, she was out. Got in through the kitchen window. It's unlocked, everything else was locked. So you're in there doing what? Looking around, looking around to see who lived in the house. It was just her. 
Okay. And then what do you do? Well, I left the house. for a little bit to see if she was alone. She was. And I went in and she went back to sleep. I just went to sleep. Okay. So you go in, she's sleeping, and what do you do? Well, I, I snuck up to the side of her bed, expecting to uh, try to knock her out. She woke up, but she did as I said. So I did hit her. What did you say? Lie down on your tummy. Okay. She did. I tied her up. What did you tie her up with? Some uh, rope I brought. So she's on her stomach. How are you tying her up? Just tying her hands behind her back. Okay. She got clothes on at that point? Mm hmm. What kind of clothes? S sweats. All right. Tie her hands behind her back, and then then what happens? I took her clothes off. Okay. And then what happened? Rape can mean a lot of different things. Uh, what kind of sexual act it took place? Just, uh, vaginal and oral. Okay. Oral. Who was performing the oral sex? Um, no, me on her and her on me. Any uh, any condoms used or anything like that? No. No. So, the, and again, correct me if I'm wrong. Vaginal intercourse. Uh, her play, performing oral sex on you, and you performing oral sex on her. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what order those things occurred in? Yeah. I uh, started with the oral sex. Then I raped her. And then later on I made her form oral sex on me. Okay. Anything, any kind of conversation happening when this is going on? Yeah, a little bit. What was being said? Well, I threatened her before she uh, before I had her perform oral sex. What did you say? Well, I put a zip tie around her neck. I said uh, that I would pull it if I didn't like what uh, she would do. Okay. So she did what you told her to do? Mm hmm Any issues there? Any reason to pull it? No. So, do you remember if you ejaculated at that point? Or at any point? Um, not at that point, but later on. Okay. So, the oral sex finishes, and then what happens next? Well, 
Well, I continued uh, to rape her, and I had her put on some of her underwear. Took some pictures, lots of pictures. And then uh, got her dressed, walked back to the truck. Okay. At what point did you decide that she was going to leave with you? I'm not sure. That wasn't uh, necessarily always the plan. But at some point, uh, I was there for three, three hours, three and a bit. Okay. Um, do you remember the conversation about leaving? Was there any? Did she say anything about that, or? What was she saying um, to you? She was, um, certainly cooperative. Okay. A cooperative can mean a number of different things. Was she excited about leaving with you? I, mean, I don't want to be sarcastic, but... Um, no, no, she just didn't put up too much of a fuss. Did she try and negotiate with you at all, or mm -hmm. what did she say? Well, I told her that I would uh, let her go later on. Okay. So when you take her out of your house, is she is she still bound, or? Yep. How how is that done? Just uh, hands behind her back. Okay. What about her feet? Anything there? No, she was walking freely. Okay. Barefoot or? No, no, she had those brown suede shoes on that had been reported. Okay. So where does she sit in your truck when you get to the truck? Front seat, passenger side. Okay. And where do you go? Straight to Tweed. Straight to your house in Tweed or straight yep. to just the town? To the house. No stops anywhere? No. Okay. What time do you remember what time you arrived there? I don't exactly, but I'd say between 4.30 and 5.30. Okay. All right. When you were, uh, when you were first there before she came home, do you remember, did anybody come to the door at all when you were in the house? No, I think somebody had come home, uh, somebody had come to the house just before she did. Because I thought it was her, but then they left. I was outside at the time. Did you see who that person was or what kind of vehicle they were no. in or anything? No. I saw the lights and I assumed it was her, and then all of a sudden they left, so I don't know what happened. Okay. Um, where were you when that first vehicle pulled up? In the back. Back here. Okay. So you didn't have a view of the vehicle, you could just tell that there was a vehicle there, is that fair? Okay. So you get home, what, 4.35 you say? Okay. And then what happens? Uh, well, she, um, she just go to the bathroom. And uh, she had a quick shower. Washer. Then we went to, into my bedroom. And went to sleep a little bit. She was tied up. How was she tied up at that point? Smacked the other guy. I put um, tape over her eyes from the beginning. So that's what she had. Okay. When they find her, is that tape going to be there? Or was it ever removed? No, I removed it. Okay. 
What kind of tape? Third tape. All right. The duct tape that you used, where's the, where's that roll? Uh, it's all gone. It, um, I used it to, I used the rest of it to uh, bind her, bind her body. So, by all gone, is it is it with the body now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you said who went to sleep when you came home? You, you had a sh or she had a shower? Well, we both got in. I washed her off after she'd been to the bathroom. We both went to sleep, but she was tied up, and I had tied the rope. You know, so I could fall asleep a little bit, and she could move without waking me up. I'm trying to picture how that would be. So the rope's tied to what on her? It's tied her hands behind Mine. her back. Okay. And it and then the rope just wrapped around me a couple of times, so there was no slack. Okay. Do you remember how long you slept for? Not long, maybe a couple hours. Do you know if she slept? I don't know. Okay. So you wake up and... And it wasn't... I mean, we were up and down, up and down. So it wasn't two hours straight, it was about two hours in bed, but there wasn't much sleep, just lying there probably. So you wait, you get up from that, and, and what happens next? Um, she had a seizure, actually. She felt it coming on, and um, because she'd had some before. Lasted uh, oh, quite a while. Got her dressed into the uh, family room and anyway, she uh, she recovered. She got uh, you know, obviously stress. So, yeah. how do you know she had them before? She told me. Did she tell you why she gets them? Well, she suggested it was stress. Yeah, so she felt herself you know, start to tense up and said she thought she was going to have a seizure. You know, so she was, she was, it was, Convulsions is what she was saying. Okay. So she reco recovered from that? Yep. She, um, I, I stayed with her and talked her through it and made sure she didn't bite her tongue. Okay. And then what happened? Well, then we had a little lie down right there because she was obviously exhausted. Put a cover over her and she went to sleep. Wait for an hour or so. And I had told her um, earlier that before I let her go, I wanted to take some pictures of her in her underwear. sex with her. So after she'd had uh, a rest for an hour or so, I had her uh, put on 
number of different outfits she had. I'm sorry? Put on a number of, you know, pairs, panties, bra that she had. Okay. Got taken from the house. So she put those on and I took pictures. Are you in any of these pictures? Yep. What, what kind of Im what kind of images are you in? Um, well, I'm with her. There's on the hard drives. You'll see there's video as well. So there was a video of the, um, yeah. almost four hours, I guess. Of what? Well, of, uh, Initially at her place of uh, raping her, and then uh, yeah. So I was running the video, and then taking still pictures. So the video pretty much covers everything. Did you use video at other places? Is that video on the hard drives? Yep. Yeah. Same type of uh, activity? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't have her put on any stuff. Okay. So Jessica poses for these pictures and there's videos and, um, and then what happens? Then... Um, I got her dressed because she thought she was leaving. Got a bite to eat. Fruit. And then as we were walking out, uh, I struck her on the back of the head. Okay. When did you decide to do that? Well, I was uh, pretty sure that I wasn't going to let her leave, but um, you know, the idea of striking her on the head was developed in the afternoon. And what was that strike supposed to accomplish in your mind? What was the intent of, of doing that? Well. I thought I would be able to knock her out, and then I was I was going to strangle her. Okay. So when you actually do strike her, what, what's the result? Her skull gave way a little bit. Felt like, and there was a lot of blood, so I think that's what happened. She was immediately unconscious. And then I um, strangled her. How'd you strangle her? Uh, same rope. Just put her on her neck. Okay. While well, she was uh, unconscious. Now, what happened to the zip tie that was around her neck earlier? I took it off. Uh, around then, I guess. Did you take it off before you put the rope around her neck, or, or after? Or do you remember? After she was dead. 
Oh, okay. So the zip tie was around her neck while you used the rope? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you leave the rope around her neck? No. Okay. And how did you know she was dead? She, um, body stopped moving. Okay. So what did you do after that? I, uh, I bound her up. To a, there's her fetal position. Cleaned up the floor. No, you say you bound her up. Is that, are you referring to the duct tape that you talked about earlier? Yeah. Okay. So then, what did you? I um, put her in the garage. It was very cold. And then I went into the base. Okay. Why'd you go to the base? Pardon me? Why'd you go to the base? Because I was flying early the next morning. Okay. So what time did you leave to go to the base? Well, I told you about between 9 and 10 or so. On the Friday night? Yep. Okay. So you fly and... Then I drove home to Ottawa. So which night would you... Saturday night. So you land uh, and... Uh, what time are you landing? 6, 6.30. Okay. Saturday night. Did you go by the house in Tweed on your way to Ottawa? Or? No. Um, so you drove straight home to yeah. Ottawa? What time did you get there at? Do you remember? Sometime before midnight. I can't quite remember, but uh, I think I went in the office first, did some work. So I think I got home to Ottawa just before midnight. Something like that. I think. I'm not sure. I I slept for a little bit in the, the Tim Hortons in Brockville. So it might be later. I honestly can't remember when I got done of it. Okay. Yeah. Midnight ish, Saturday. Mm hmm. So you get home. You're in Ottawa, what do you do? Go to, go to bed or yeah. stay up? Okay. So then what do you do the next day? Well, my wife and I did some stuff. I can't remember what uh, what was going on that day. You know, putting together the new house. And I headed back to Tweed that night. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Um, no, I didn't. I had uh, I had Monday off. That's right. I had Monday off, and then I was visiting uh, one of the units in Ottawa on Tuesday. So I didn't head back to Tweed till Tuesday night. Okay. <clears throat> Get back to Tweed, and what happens next? I uh, took Jessica's body to that spot. Okay. That happened on Tuesday night? Just this past Tuesday, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what time that was? It was pretty late. It was uh, midnight ish. I'd say between midnight and one. On, uh, Wednesday morning. Okay. 
Um, what made you decide to, to measure that distance, that 0.7 kilometers? That's just the way I am. Numbers. I have to know the numbers. Okay. And um, how did you leave her? I just left her tucked behind a, um, a fairly large rock. Okay. Is that duct tape still on her? Mm -hmm. um, and what else is on her? A couple of towels wrapped around her head. And uh, the top and pants she was wearing, jeans. Okay. Did you ever go back there? Um, what other type of cleaning and things like that did you do? Anything else to kind of cover your tracks that you can think of? I vacuumed the house and I uh, wiped the, the floor, washed the floor. Okay. What about your truck? Did you do anything with that? Just the uh, wash today because it was a mess and vacuum. Um, so Marie Franz, when did uh, when did it first occur to you to go to her house? Uh, well, probably in October, October, November. Not quite sure, but somewhere in that time frame. And do you, re you remember why you that you thought to um, to do that? Uh, well, you know, she had said she lived alone when the one time I met her. Mm -hmm. trying to understand like, why her versus, you know, the dozens of other women you probably come across on a daily basis. I don't know. Yeah, I... Yeah, I went out there uh, when she wasn't home just to see where she lived. And... When did you do that? A couple of nights before. How did you know her address? Well, is it on the roll for the base? Or? Okay. So when you go out there a couple of nights before, do you remember what night that was? When you were there the first time? I don't. Uh, but I, it was within two or three nights, I think. Okay. Probably, well, no more than four, anyway, something like that. And did you actually go into her house on that occasion, or did you, uh, okay. So what happened that night? How'd you, how'd you get into her house? This window on the side of the basement, side window. Okay. And just a back step a bit. How did you get to her house that, that first night you went there? I drove. What did you drive? Uh, I think I drove my truck. What kind of finder? Do you remember where you parked it? Yeah, I parked it. Um, it's a bit of a division in the residential areas there. I parked it on another side. Okay. Six, seven hundred meters away. Okay. So not on her street, on a mm -hmm. different street? Do you remember what street you parked on? No, but it uh, actually might be the same street, but there's an interruption in the street where there's a construction zone. So. 
there's a pathway in between. So it, it, I think it's probably the same street. Okay. So you, uh, you go to her house, and when you went there that night, did you know that she was away? Uh, I'm not sure if I knew entirely, but I, I, I think I thought she was away. Okay. Is that based on her schedule, or, or how, would, how would you know? Uh, that? Well, my, yeah, because I fly with the squatter, and I have access to the schedule, and Okay. It's a slightly different schedule she has, but that's probably how I know. You don't know for sure? I think that's probably how I know. Okay. So you go to her house, mm -hmm. and what do you do that night, the first night? I looked around and uh, I didn't make sure that she was living there alone. And I'm sorry, did you say, I can't remember if you said, how, how did you get in? Same, same way, about side basement window. Side basement window, okay. Do you remember what kind of window it is? Like what made it? Uh, well, I just noticed it was, well, it was the flashlight, I could see that it was not locked. It had been opened slightly. So I removed the screen, slid it open, went in. Okay. So you go in and uh, you're in her house. Figuring out she lives alone, and, and uh, do you do anything that night? Yeah, I was playing with her uh, underwear. What do you mean playing with her underwear? Oh, wearing it. Okay. Doing anything else? No, I didn't, didn't touch her stuff. What do you mean you didn't touch her stuff? I mean, you touched her underwear, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. But nothing else. Okay. Did you take any of the underwear with you that night? Yeah, a few pieces. And where did you find the underwear when you went in? In her drawer. Was it clean? Was it used? For clean. Okay. Um, anything else you can remember doing that evening? That you no. All right. So um, after that first visit, did you return again before meeting up with her? No. Okay. So which day did you go? to her house when she was there? Well, the night before I went to Ottawa, so I think that was Monday night. All right. Um, so let's walk through that. Uh, what time do you think you got there? About 11 or so, probably. 10, 30, 11. So she was on the phone in her room. You could hear that uh, from the backyard. I got in through the uh, side window. The same basement window? Mm -hmm. How could you hear from the backyard? What was... Uh, Just hear her on the phone. From beside, you know, beside the house. You could hear her through the walls that she was on the phone. Any idea who she was talking to or what she was talking about? No, didn't hear that one. Okay, so you go in through the basement window. And what are you wearing when this is happening? Um, a sweatshirt and dockers, I guess. And the uh, two pieces on my head. Where are those two pieces now? Pieces that you wore on the head? Uh, they're probably in my bag, in uh, my luggage bag, in 
Edison in the bedroom. What does your luggage bag look like? It's a blue duffel bag type thing. It's right beside the bed. Is it the only blue duffel bag in your bedroom? Mm -hmm. um, and these pieces, what do they look like again? It's a blue headband. Okay. Standard blue, you know, winter headband. And uh, black skull cap type thing. Okay. Any insignias or anything on them? Yeah, there are, but I don't know what they are. The know? blue headband has something stands, uh, you know, stitched, a, a name of some sort stitched on it. And the uh, skull cap has some sort of emblem, on, white emblem on the black. I don't know what it is. Are they like sports emblems or company emblems or? Um, it's the manufacturers. Okay. Anything else in that blue uh, duffel bag? I don't think so. Is it full of, of things other just, than? Just my clothes. Okay. Um, so you go in, do uh, you remember what you had on your feet? In the house there? When you went to Marie France's house. Uh, probably running shoes. There wasn't snow on the ground. So you go in and you're in the basement. And uh, whereabouts in the basement are you? Um, by the furnace. Okay. And what are you doing? Like, what, uh, what's your what's your sort of plan at that point? I was waiting for you to go to bed. Okay. And how long did that take? Well, she didn't. Because then she came down looking for the cat. All right. And uh, what happens next? Well, as I described, I subdued her. Give her the flashlight. But essentially, yeah. wrestled her to the ground and tied her up. Okay. And what did you use to tie her up? Same rope, green rope. It's in tweed. Is it just green or like, uh, how long is this piece of rope? It's probably uh, 20 feet. It's, it's a boat, boat rope. It's got some red specks in it, I think. Okay. Is there lots of ropes in tweed or is this probably the only rope? No, this uh, there are two two lengths. Two lengths of the same green rope, mm -hmm. and were they both used? Uh, well, I only ever had one with me, so I don't know if I used the same piece both times or not. But only two lengths of rope. Okay. So you tie her tie her up. How did you tie her up when you after you subdued her? And what is she wearing at that point? She wasn't wearing anything to start with. So when she came down to the basement, she had no clothes on? Mm -hmm. She had some sort of a shawl over her shoulder. Okay. And she immediately dropped when she saw you. Did she say anything when she saw you? She did. She called out, you bastard. Okay. And then what happened? Then I subdued her as I described. By hitting her with that red flashlight? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, they were more glancing, glancing blows. Cut her skin, but weren't doing much else. Okay. She fell over and then I subdued her. And she tripped. Okay. How did you tie her at that point? Like, I know you used the rope, but what, were you, what did you tie her up, up like? Just told her to put her, like, pulled her hands behind her back and just you know, tied her wrists together. Okay. And then, then what happened after that? Then I took her upstairs. And 
did she go upstairs under her own power or did you carry her? No, she passed out uh, on the stairs and then I carried her up. Why do you think she passed out? I expect uh, from the hits to her head. So you carried up to where? To her bedroom, put her on the bed. Okay. And then what happened? Uh, well, as I described, I think I uh, she's on the bed. I raped her over a period of time. And again, just to be specific, what, what sex acts took place? Just vaginal. Your penis and her vagina? Yeah. Any condom use? No. Did you ejaculate? No. Did you ejaculate at any point with her? No. Okay. Um, but just before I forget, you I think I asked you don't mean to bounce around on here, Russ, but with Jessica, I asked you about ejaculation. You said you didn't at that point. When did you ejaculate with Jessica? Um, the second time or third time that I had her uh, for moral sex. And was that at her residence or yours? Hers. Okay. Any other times that you ejaculated with her? When you ejaculated with Jessica, did you use anything to clean up or? No. no. What happened to the ejaculate? She swallowed it. Okay. Um, so getting back to Marie Franz, it's just straight vaginal sex, no condom, no ejaculation. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, how long does that go for? Like how long were you engaged in that activity? Uh, well, hour and a half, two hours, I guess. Okay. And then what happens next? Well, as I described, I suffocated her using um, duct tape. Why did you decide to, to do that? Well, again, because of the pictures. As I described to you, it would have, um, it was gonna be a pretty straight line back to Tweed. Okay. But why, why, why did you decide to use that method versus something else I had uh, thought about strangling her earlier that's on the video what is my It was a short, short-lived attempt because she struggled quite a bit. And then I decided that I needed to suffocate her. So it was a short-lived attempt at strangler. And what's on the video, the suffocation or the strangling? Well, just me putting my hand on her throat. Responding, yeah. no surprise, very aggressively. Okay. Any videos of the, uh, the suffocation part or pictures of that? Um, 
Now, you, you mentioned that you brought the rope with you. Where did the duct tape come from? I brought it. Okay. And what did you do with it afterwards? I think it, uh, it, it stayed in tweed. What color of duct tape are we talking about? I know it comes in a variety of colors. But Gray. Gray. Um, so before uh, the suffocation, um, obviously, how, how long do you think you were with her from the point, well, how long do you think you were in that house from the point you went in that window to the point you left? Probably um, four hours. Okay. So, correct me if I'm wrong, did you say you were got there at 11? Or around 11? I think that's right. Okay. So, you, you left around 3 in the morning? Well, I was in the basement for quite a while before she came down. I, she wasn't going to bed. So I was probably in the basement for 30, 40 minutes. Okay. So by the time she saw me, it was probably closer to midnight. All right. Um, but I didn't have a watch on, so I'm not sure. Any gloves? I don't think so. Did you wear gloves with Jessica? Uh, only to get in the house. It's a very cold night. And what about the two women in uh, in Tweed? No gloves. So while you're with Marie Franz, what kind of conversations are taking place? She, anything in it, she said to you stick out in your mind? No, no I take her mouth. There's no conversation. Okay. When did you tape her mouth? As soon as I got her up to the bedroom. Okay. Why did you decide to do that? Because she was... Uh, Quite aggressive. In what way? I was confident she was uh, would have screened, given the chance. What way? But she you? did initially. Did she? Okay. In the basement. So, in what way was she aggressive? Well, just in you know, when she discovered me, she was very vocal, screamed quite a bit until I subdued her, so I expected she would scream again, give the chance. Okay. Do you remember how you left her residence? Back door. Patio door. Okay. Did you take anything with her that night? Some of her underwear. Okay. Anything else? Um, did you do anything else to try and uh, cover your tracks with me, Franz? Um, well, I had turned off my Blackberry before I left Trent. Do you remember trying to destroy any kind of evidence there, that, or anything that you thought may have uh, produced evidence or anything? Oh, I took her sheets off the bed and ran them through the laundry. Okay. Like the laundry where? At In her house. Okay. Did you run them completely through? Did you wait for it to finish? or? No, I just put them in and put a whole bunch of bleach in and let it go. So the night you went to her house and got there at 11, you came from where? Like you said, you left Trenton. You yeah. turned off your Blackberry. Did you, are you talking about the base or are you talking about uh, where did you leave to go to her house? 
Well, no, I just turned off my BlackBerry before I left the Trenton area. Um, I would have left from the base after work. All right. When did you turn? When did you? Uh, what time do you think you turned your BlackBerry off? Well, it's only a half hour drive to Brighton, so. Probably in the nine nine thirty range. Okay. Do you remember what uh, what time you would have turned it back on? When I was back on the four one heading to Ottawa the next morning. What time would that have been? So six plus or minus thirty minutes. Okay. So you leave her house three ish. No, uh, I think it was later than that. So the four hours obviously was. I think uh, yeah, so I think it went in about 11, was in the basement for quite a while, probably left her house closer to 4, 4.30, somewhere in there. Okay. And where do you go? Uh, I drove to Ottawa. Straight to Ottawa? Yeah. Did you go by your house in Tweed or anything, or did you just go straight? No. Remember what route you took? Yeah, four one, but from her place, uh, I think I went straight north on uh, whatever the road is that goes straight through Brighton up to the four one, hit the four one, and headed east. Okay. And so you're going to, what's the meeting you're having that day in Ottawa? Remind me. It's a meeting on uh, the C seventeen acquisition project. Okay. And who ran that meeting? The project manager, Miss uh, Sue Hale. Okay. Is that the only meeting around that time period you would have went to on that issue with Sue Hale? Mm -hmm. There wasn't like a weekly meeting or anything like that. Okay. No, this is sort of a quarterly. All right. Um, so the night you went, the night this happened, um, where did you park uh, that night? As I said, across the gravel little roadway, probably it's probably the same road. Okay. Similar location to the first night? Yep. Okay. All right. Same same vehicle? Yeah, truck. Okay. All right. Um, okay, well, let's talk about uh, the, well, seeing as we're going backwards in time here, why don't we talk about the second incident in Tweed um, with uh, Lori Masakai when it's uh, a 76 Cozy Cove. How did you uh, decide on her? I knew she lived alone. How did you know that? She lived three doors down and uh, didn't know her, but I knew she was pretty lone. She had a boyfriend and hadn't seemed to be, hadn't been around. You know, uh, looked in the window and she was alone. So she she had a boyfriend, but he wasn't he too wasn't frequent. Okay. Well, he was. She told me that they were fighting, so that's why he hadn't been there. Okay. So, um, did you look in her house before the night that this uh, this incident happened, or when did you yeah, do that? I had been in uh, within the week, probably a couple of nights earlier. What did you do that night? I um, I looked around to see if there are any permanent signs of her boyfriend. I guess took uh, one or two pieces of her underwear. Okay. 
So the night you go there, um, when the incident happens, do uh, you remember what time that was? It was pretty late. Um, I probably got into the house around midnight. She was asleep on the couch. Well, I didn't know that, but I knew she was in there. And how'd you get in, sorry? A uh, window in the back of the house. There's a little sunroom. Was it just something you had to slide, or, or how did you I get that? I removed the screen and, uh, and slide it up. Okay. So I got into the house, and uh, she was asleep in front of the TV. Wearing anything on your face that night? Yeah, same things. Okay. The headband and the uh, the cap? Okay. Um, what kind of clothes did you have on? Just dark sweatshirt or pants. All right. So she's asleep on the couch, you're in there, and then what happens? We have been through this, eh? I know. I struck her with the uh, flashlight, thinking it would knock her out. It didn't. We struggled. I subdued her. Took some pictures. Left. It's probably in the house about two and a half hours. That's a pretty short description for two and a half hours. Well, yeah, we talked. I, uh, I um, I told her that there were other guys in the house robbing her. My job was just to control her. What did she say to that? Did she say that, or did you just assume that? I don't know. She said that. She was... She was worried she was going to be killed. I said, I'm not going to kill him. What did you do with... Uh, you said you took pictures of her. Um, clothed? Unclothed? Uh, both. Clothed, actually, and then unclothed. Are you in any of those pictures? I don't think so. You just took them of her? What kind of camera are you using, by the way? But, uh, it's a digital uh, sign. You just have the one camera? Yeah. And the video camera. Oh, so they're two separate? Yeah. Well, some cameras take, take video, right? Um, and where is the camera and the, and the video camera? In Tweed. Is it the only camera and video camera in that house? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so you take pictures of her, and how do you end up leaving? If you. Uh, And did you leave immediately, or did you stay there for a while, oh, no, no. see what she was going to do? Or? I left. Um, and where do you go? Home. Straight home? Mm -hmm. okay. Did you Did you wait to see if the police showed up or anything? Or? No. Well, I mean, it's, you know, so what did you do when you got home? A couple feet. Uh, I went to sleep. What did you do the next day? Went to work, normal time. OK. 
a couple hours later. All right. Um, do you remember how uh, her clothing was removed? Uh, well, because her hands were tied behind her back, I think I cut off her top and then pulled off her bottom. What did you use to cut her top? Uh, I can't remember if it was a knife or like a folding exacto knife or Leatherman or one of the two. Are these items that are in your house in Tweet? Yep. Okay. Was there ever any other time you used a, a, a knife to cut off clothing or anything else? Do you remember? I cut off Jessica's uh, top with a knife. So her hands were tied behind her back. That's all. Okay. Where's that knife? Which knife did you Same use? That was the leather. That was leather? Tweed. Is it the only Leatherman in, in Tweed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so on the 16th of September, uh, when you went in that night, was that the first time you've been in her house? And why her? Just because I'd seen her and she was cute. That's it. Okay. So there was no... Um, you didn't go into her house before that, that night? No. All right. Um, so you go in and how'd you get into her house? Side window. was not locked, cut the screen, slid the window, curled in. Okay. And uh, what are you wearing? Same. Sweatshirt, dark pants. And the same hat and... Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and where do you find... Uh... In bed, sleep. Okay. And what do you do? Stood over her for a while and I uh, hit her on the left side of her head just with my hand. Just woke her up. We struggled. You know, I just lay on her. And uh, very much like I described a little bit ago. Took off her, pulled her top down, and took off her pants. Took some pictures, left. Do you remember her saying anything to you? Yes. What did she say to you? All kinds of things. Um, you know, she had a, a young baby just uh, next door, the other room. Eight months or so. So obviously concerned about the baby. Concerned for herself. I assured her I was not going to hurt her. Physically, you know. Um, any underwear taken from or Lori? Yep, both. And where would they be located? In Tweed. Okay. And why are they in Tweed as opposed to uh, um, Marie Franz and Jessica's underwear? Remember how much of their underwear you took? Um, not very much from Lori. Did they know that you took their underwear? I don't know. You didn't discuss it with them or anything? Um, so where in Tweed would their underwear be? Um, in the, uh, there's a laundry 
laundry room area. Okay. Just between the house and the garage. Right. Where in that laundry area would they be kept? There's a cupboard uh, up top. They're in a duffel bag. What's a duffel bag look like? It's a green army duffel bag. Okay. Are they all in the same duffel bag? Is there anything else in that duffel bag? Just underwear. Okay. Um. When these when these uh, pictures uh, are looked at, uh, you talked about being in Marie Franz's underwear on the first night you went in. Did you take photographs of that? Yep. What about anybody else's underwear? Yep. Photos. Of you in their underwear? Mm hmm And where were those photos taken? Uh... Sometimes in it's in, in Marie France's case in her house. The other is in my house. In tweet? Mm -hmm. So is this a matter you would take the underwear, go back and and then at some point put the underwear on and take pictures? What about Jessica's underwear? She's only her friend. So you don't have pictures of you and her? Or? No. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Well, I guess uh, I just have a, a couple of questions for you. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more questions, but I guess what's on my mind right now, uh, Russ, is um, what made you decide to, to tell me this tonight? Mostly uh, to make my wife's life easier. Okay. Is what you've told me tonight the truth? Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about what you've done? Like what? Uh, ask you this, if, um, if this didn't come to the point it's at right now, if for whatever reason you didn't end up on our, on our radar, so to speak, uh, do you think it would have happened again? I was hoping not, but I can't answer the question. Okay. Um, not too much here, Russ, just a, a few details that I wanted to cover off, and specifically dealing with Marie France. Um, in the basement of her house, uh, there's a hole in the uh, drywall. Do you recall how that happened? Whereabouts? Uh, I don't know specifically, but it's downstairs. I don't remember. Do you remember doing anything with her in the basement uh, where you may have used some clothing or something to uh, to secure her? Yeah, I tied her up against one of the uh, poles in the basement initially. I went outside and put the screen back on and secured the window. Okay. While she was tied to the pole? Yep. And what was your thinking behind doing that at that point? Just to cover up how I'd come in. Okay. Um, now, by the time she's tied to that pole, is that in the very initial few minutes kind of thing of the confrontation, or? That was 
shortly after I'd subdued her and tied her up, yes. Okay. Does she have the duct tape on her mouth yet? I think probably. Okay. The pictures will show it. All right. Now, in the upstairs bathroom by her bedroom, there's a... Uh, looks like something's occurred in there. Remember that? Yep. What happened there? She had passed out on the bed. And I had gone to look out the front window, see if anybody was coming. And uh, she got up and closed the bedroom door and raced into the bathroom trying to uh, get somebody's attention. But her mouth was taped and her hands were tied. Okay. What but did you do as a result of that? Well, I just got in and subdued her again and got got her back into the bedroom. Okay. Didn't do anything, just regain control of her. Okay. If I remember correctly, there's a bit there's a bit of blood in there. Do you know where that blood would have how that that would have occurred? All the blood was from the initial hits as I was trying to subdue her. Okay. Her skin breaking with the uh, blows to her head. Okay. Do you recall blood being in the bathroom? No, actually, I didn't have the light on there, but it didn't surprise me. Okay. Um, there's a pair of underwear and some socks on the floor of that bathroom that belong to her. Do you, do you remember how they got there? I don't do you remember didn't seeing see them. them okay. What do you recall doing to her breasts? It's pretty clear that there was some something happened to her breasts. Do you remember what that might have been? certainly touched her breasts. I didn't do anything to hurt them. I remember that? No. Okay. All right. Um, well, Russ, now, uh, when I suffocated her, she was on her, her, her front. So may have been something there. But what do you mean? Well, she was lying on the floor in the bedroom as I suffocated her and obviously struggled may have been in there that something happened, but I didn't do anything specifically to her breasts. Okay. So when you suffocate her, that's when you have the duct tape over her mouth and nose? Mm -hmm. And that's on the floor? Yeah. And um, then what happens after that? Well, she died, and I um, and took the duct tape off her head and put her on the bed and covered her up with uh, duvet. Okay. And what was your thinking behind doing that? Nothing really. Okay. Um, as you might expect, your arrest, uh, certainly uh, even now, one of the uh, Ottawa <laughs> investigators mentioned to me that um, there's a number of incidents that, uh, that have gone unsolved over the years. <coughs> can I, uh, I was going to get into that, can I go to the washroom quickly? Yeah, I can get somebody to take you to the washroom, okay.